Hey guys, hope you're doing well. We are back in the kitchen again today, but we are doing something a little bit different. We're not gonna be cooking. So for some of you, I know this is great news. You don't have to see me make something again and sweat and mess it up and all that stuff. But for others of you, I know you're gonna be disappointed because you love to see me cook and you love to see the next dish that I prepare. Thanks, mom. And for that third group, you're probably here by mistake and didn't even mean to click on the video, but please stay, like, subscribe, click the bell. It costs you nothing. Regardless, we're gonna shift the focus from the food to the cookware, specifically cast iron. Cast iron is an amazing material to work with when you're cooking. It maintains the heat. You can move it directly from the burner to the oven because it's oven safe. There are so many advantages to using it and it doesn't require nearly as much maintenance as you think it might. So I wanna break the video down into three different stages. Stage one, Disaster, you've damaged your cast iron. Someone else has damaged your cast iron, probably your spouse. You have found a piece of damaged cast iron on a rummage sale online or something like that, and you're wondering if you can bring it back to life. That's gonna take us to stage two, which is gonna be the rehabilitation. How do you take the rust off? How do you get it looking like new? And then stage three, the cleaning and the maintaining, the way that you can keep your cast iron looking brand new for a lifetime. So I want you to join me on this. Don't wash your hands this time because we're gonna get them dirty learning all about cast iron and how to maintain it. Okay, so starting out with stage one, disaster. Uh, and, and before we even really get started with that, I guess I should really say a word about cast iron in general, okay? So you basically have two different kinds that I'm aware of anyway. Your traditional cast iron, which is gonna look like this. And I'll explain this weird camera angle uh, in a little bit, you'll understand. But this is your traditional cast iron, okay? Uh, when you buy this, a lot of times it'll say that it's pre-seasoned, and we'll talk about what that means in a little bit. But this is what the traditional looks like that you've probably seen before. This is your enamel cast iron, okay? Now, there's a couple of different brands you can find. Uh, Lodge is very popular. Le Creuset is the more expensive type. But the enamel cast iron is really great for beginners because this one you don't have to worry about washing by hand and making sure it's completely dry so it doesn't rust. This one you can put in the dishwasher, which is shocking. Uh, but you get all the great things about cast iron as far as the even heating and the, and the movement from the burner into the oven. So that's a good fit for someone who's maybe new to using cast iron. But today we're gonna to talk mostly about the traditional. I don't think I've ever bought a brand new piece of cast iron cookware except the enamel. Uh, and the reason being is just because you can find so many great discounts and values buying them online uh, that are used or in rummage sales or trade fairs or places like that because oftentimes they're rusted or they're used and, and people think that they're throwaways. So they'll sell them for either really cheap or they'll just give them away. They'll list them on next door uh, for like just a free item or whatnot. So that's actually a great resource to find cast iron if you wanna put in a little bit of time and effort. And I'm gonna show you during uh, stage two of the video, you know, what that means exactly, right? But generally speaking, most of the cast iron uh, cookware you find is not that damaged. Now, some of it is beyond repair. If there's holes, obviously there's nothing you can do about that. But rust, surprisingly, it's okay. So this is a piece I bought online. Uh, this was a really great value because it just has some buildup on it. Uh, there's a little bit of rust, but nothing really bad. So, so this is supposed to be though the disaster stage. And I told you I'd explain this weird camera angle. So to make it worse, I'm gonna do the one thing that you are not supposed to do. And even if you don't know anything about cast iron, there's a good chance you've heard someone say over the years, never, ever, ever put cast iron in the dishwasher. That is the cardinal sin. Well, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do this because I feel like there are so many people out there who either they by mistake or their spouses or kids trying to help or whomever has put a cast iron skillet or something, pot, whatnot, in the dishwasher and then they thought it's just donezo. So we're gonna do that on purpose today, and then we're gonna see what it looks like when we take it out. And this is gonna be our prototype that we're gonna try to clean up and see how it turns out in the end. So now, 
Let's put it in the dishwasher and see what happens. So bad, so bad. Never, ever, ever do this. So at this point, we are done washing our cast iron skillet in the dishwasher. And I have to say, it actually came out a lot better than I expected. So I would say we're, we're still in the, you know, disaster devastation mode. I would say this is probably about a medium, okay? So your, your high end is gonna be a cast iron skillet that's just rusted all over, that's just got complete rust from top to bottom. Uh, no holes in the bottom, of course, because then it's unusable, but as long as it's got just rust on it, you can clean that off. This would be about the mid zone, I would say, because you can tell there's some rust. It's definitely got a dull finish versus like the shinier finish you see around the edges still, and even the handle's got a little bit of rust. So this would be about a medium. Your low end is gonna be your normal wear and tear. If you use your cast iron skillet nightly, semi-nightly, a few times a week, whatever, over time, you're gonna see that seasoning break away. Now, I said we were gonna talk about seasoning and we'll make a quick mention of it right now though it'll come in play bigger on the next step when we get into stage two okay the seasoning is basically a layer of oil that is baked onto your skillet it's what gives it that non-stick simulation like you see in non-stick skillets that you buy with like a teflon surface this is more of a natural finish and that's why a lot of people like cast iron because it's not synthetic it's a real organic material that's baked onto the skillet itself not to mention that as you cook more and more with it, slight amounts of oil are gonna bake into the material just like when we do this seasoning phase coming up in stage two. So just one of the other many reasons of why cast iron is a great type of uh, cookware to use. But anyway, so here we are still, the stage one, we've destroyed it uh, to this level anyway, we're about a medium. Now the good thing is, is whether you are at a high, a medium, or a low level of damage to your cookware, the remedy is gonna be the same. And it is going to be very, very easy. It involves three things, a steel wool, which is this, uh, it's stainless steel. You don't wanna use copper, that's a bit too abrasive. This'll be your perfect fit. You can get these at the grocery store, uh, Walmart, Target. They come three to a pack, usually for about $2.50, less than a dollar per unit. So it's steel wool, you're going to need dish soap, just plain old dish soap, and water. And that is it, that is all it's gonna take to take your cast iron skillet from devastation into light new status again. So this will be one of the only times that you will use water and soap on your cast iron cookware because usually you would not have to do this. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and get our cast iron skillet, give it a nice kind of wet layer on there. And we're gonna take some dish soap like so. Scrub, scrub, scrub. This is mainly needed if you have the rust because you'll see it won't take much. This is gonna take the rust right off. Shut the water off before people start screaming at me about wasting. I know, I'm aware. So basically you just wanna give it a good scrubbing and we're gonna scrub all of this, the inside, the outside, the handle. We wanna make sure we get all of that rust off and you can see it's already coming off. Right, so it used to be we had some rust here and a little bit here. So we're just gonna keep scrubbing. Obviously, if you've got a high level damage piece, uh, you're gonna have a lot more rust that you're gonna have to take off. So you just gotta put some elbow grease into it. And no, do not go to the store and try to find something called elbow grease. I just mean muscle. Put a little bit of whip muscle into it and scrub all that debris off. I'm gonna flip it over now, put a little more just soap here. Add a little more water, it's slippery, so I gotta be careful. These things are heavy, don't hurt yourself. But most importantly, you wanna make sure you get all of the rust off. The rust is the main thing because that's what's gonna cause issues. Water is not your friend when it comes to cast iron. So this is why I said earlier that if you have an heirloom piece that your great aunt Matilda has given you and she's so proud and it looks like crap, don't worry, you're gonna bring it back to new and Aunt Matilda is gonna think that you went out and bought a new one and threw hers away. But you can say, oh no, 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 my friend. I cleaned that myself. Now let's give this a quick rinse and see where we are so far. Rinse out our steel wool. And another note about the steel wool, do not, do not buy SOS pads. You do not wanna buy anything that's got cleaner built in. We don't need that. Just the plain steel wool is all you're gonna need. 
just like that, all the rust is gone. So if you're dealing with a light damaged skillet, right, or a pan or pot or whatever, uh, you want to make sure you get all the food particles off if they've been really good and baked on. Now we're going to look at, in the cleaning stage, stage three, how to avoid that. I had a friend of mine reach out the other day because he had food stuck onto his and it was really burned on pretty good. This is what you would do to take care of that as well. Now at this point in the cleaning process, go ahead and I'll explain in a minute what we're going to do, but go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees. That's where you want to be, 450, also known as toasty, uh, because we're going to put our skillet into the oven when we get into the seasoning phase of stage two. I think we are just about done with this part of the process. We are going to rinse out our skillet and oh my gosh, that is exactly what you want to see. I don't mean to be surprised, I like to be confident like I expected this, but honestly, you never know. You can see different color. See, this is black around here, a lot darker than this more kind of gray or silver in the middle, right? Uh, you'll see a little bit of it on the bottom as well. Not a huge deal. If you want to keep going and, I mean, just scrub, scrub, scrub till your heart's desire. Get out all that frustration. Get out all that COVID anger. Get it all out. Get it all out. Very important part. You want to go ahead and dry off your cast iron skillet. Obviously, as we said a moment ago, water is not our friend when it comes to cast iron. So we're going to dry this in two ways. One, we're going to do what I'm doing right now, which is obviously with a towel. We're going to get it as dry as we can. And then we are going to move this over to the burner, put it on a low heat for about five minutes, just to burn off any residual uh, moisture that could be there because we do not want to trap any water uh, underneath our seasoning coat. Otherwise we're right back to square one. So we're going to put this on the burner for five minutes and I'll circle back in just a second. All right. So we've taken our skillet off the burner. It is completely bone dry. I've also wiped this down so it's dry. So don't worry from where I was washing a minute ago. All of this is dry now. The skillet is completely dry. Uh, it is completely clean since we've just done the scrubbing phase. And now we move on to uh, part B of uh, stage two. This is the seasoning. So I really hate, and I don't know who came up with that term, to call it seasoning, but when you hear about a cast iron skillet or a piece of cast iron cookware like a Dutch oven being seasoned, they just mean, like I said earlier, that it's got a layer of nonstick coating baked in specifically oil. Uh, when you're gonna be doing this on your own, it's going to be canola oil, vegetable oil, something like that. You could use lard, you could use shortening, melted, but you wanna basically apply a thin layer to the entire piece of the cookware, inside and out. Now, prepping our oven, which is what we're gonna to go to next, you wanna be sure to have your oven, as I said earlier, preheated to 450, and you wanna put a rack on the middle as well as a rack below with the piece of aluminum foil. And the reason we do that is because as this bakes in the oven for an hour, it might drip some excess oil and you don't want that burning on the bottom of your, of your oven. So that's what the foil is for. And we're gonna go ahead and coat our skillet now and I will show you what I mean. I've got a paper towel. I personally am using some vegetable oil. And one thing you wanna be sure you do is apply a thin coat. Now, God knows. I am the type of person where if you give me the option of maximum, I'm gonna go with maximum. I always tend to do more. And I learned my lesson the hard way that you do not want to over apply the oil. The reason being is because it does not make it more uh, nonstick, it actually makes it stickier. Uh, so you wanna just put a thin layer of oil and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and dip my paper towel into my vegetable oil and I'm just gonna start applying a light coat just like this. And again, when this bakes for an hour, this is what's going to give us our nice non-stick seasoning. And this is what makes it look all shiny and new. So this is when you're going to really see the fruits of your labor. Now, this is an older skillet. I can tell right now just because of the years of buildup. Not necessarily that it's going to be a problem. It's definitely been scrubbed as much as it needs to be. But you can see the difference in a little bit of the texture and in the colors. 
just from the years of, of uh, kind of wear and tear it's had and maybe not the best maintenance, but it's still gonna be great to cook things in, cornbread, um, meats, things like that, whatever you need. So we're just gonna move to the outside and do the outside as well. Careful to just apply a thin coat of oil on your skillet. Now, obviously I saved the handle for the last because then otherwise it's gonna be slipping out of your hand the whole time. That's not helping anything. Now it might take two or three times of doing this. Definitely allow a day for this, I would say. Like a weekend, uh, if you're gonna be working from home and you can step away to kind of do this in the downtime because it will be an hour in the oven and then you're gonna let it cool off while it's in the oven slowly and you might have to repeat that process, well this process that is, sometimes up to two or three times depending on how damaged your cookware might be. All right, so I still haven't done the handle yet but I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more quick wipe down of the whole skillet, make sure everything is as it should be and then I will switch over to my handle. There we go. So far, I think not that complicated. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this skillet, I'm gonna move it over to the oven and put it face down. So let's go ahead and, and move that over there now. And we've got our oven preheated to 450 and we've got our foil at the bottom and we're just gonna place our skillet upside down into the oven like so. And we're gonna set the timer for one hour. 450, one hour, and then cut the oven off and just let the skillet cool in the oven till it's completely cooled down. And that is the last step of stage one, destroy or damage, stage two, rehabilitation, you did it. Give yourself a round of applause. Very good, very good. All right, little soldiers. So it's been an hour and then it's been another three hours while we wait for the oven to cool down. So like I told you, this is a long-term thing. You wanna be sure you set enough time aside, but let's check on our guy in the oven and see how he did. Oh, looking good, looking good. So that's the light, not a, a batch of rust on the bottom. So don't get nervous. The skillet has come out of the oven great. It's completely cooled down. Hopefully if you're doing this on your end, it looks the same. It's not gonna look like it did fresh from the factory, but I mean, given what you're starting with, especially if it's in really bad shape, you should see a considerable difference. But most importantly, it's gonna function properly now. You'll have that nonstick property built in, thanks to the seasoning, which we discussed earlier, was that layer of oil that is baked in and has been cemented over time in the oven so that now you have a skillet that is ready to go and fit into your cookware repertoire, ready to make the meals that your family loves to eat. So, a couple of things about the maintenance, and that brings us to stage three. Uh, you wanna make sure that with cast iron, you're not heating it too quickly, okay? Cast iron's like an 18-wheeler trying to go up a hill. It's gonna take it a little while, but once it builds the momentum, it's good to go. Same with your skillet. Heat it over medium, okay? So you're not gonna need to be in a hurry with this. Give it a little bit of time, but you'll be rewarded. Uh, what you will notice with cast iron also is that as you cook with butter, with oil, with the natural animal fats, a little bit of that is going to create another layer of seasoning, which is only going to enhance your skillet's nonstick properties and the flavor it's gonna infuse into your future dishes as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind about why cast iron is so great. But when it comes to the cleaning, let's say you're done. You've made your meals and you're done. There are two basic ways to clean your cast iron daily or whenever you use it, basically. Uh, the first is going to be water, not soap, but you can use just water. If you've made something messy and you've got a lot of food debris, it's fine to rinse it in the sink and use a brush or something like that. Never any chemicals, never any soap, just plain water, but that's okay. And then you wanna do what we did earlier where you dry it with a towel really well and then put it on a burner for low, medium low, around five or eight minutes, just to make sure all of that water gets good and evaporated out of those pores because you don't want it uh, creating any kind of rust, right? Although if it does, now you know what to do. The other method, which is what I actually use the most, is when I take a little bit of salt, like so, let me show you. I use the sea salt, it's just some coarse salt. It's gonna act as a natural abrasive, right? So you're gonna pour yourself some sea salt 
and then you're going to grab some vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever you prefer, right? Put that into your skillet and then just scrub because the salt is going to work as a natural abrasive and break up any food debris that you have and return your skillet to its clean and proper state, right? So normally you'd scrub, 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 but for expediency's purposes, we'll say I'm done. And then you want to be sure you take all this out. And whether you're doing the water method with, with washing your skillet out and then letting it dry and whatnot, or whether you're doing this method, you always want to make sure, which this would look better if I were doing it in real life, but anyway, you know what I mean. You want to make sure that you have a nice thin layer of oil and then let your skillet come back down to uh, a cool temperature on its own, right? You never want to rush it and then you store it with your others. And speaking of storage, one last quick note I would say, it's always smart just to keep everything protected by taking some simple paper towels like so and putting them in between each of your skillets, right? So yes, I will be going back and cleaning up that salty mess after this is over, but you put this skillet here and then one more. This way you make sure that your skillets stay good and protected while they're storing and they don't scrape each other and, and knock off some of those essential uh, layers of seasoning. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a like if you have. That way I know you're responding to the content. I certainly appreciate you watching nonetheless and you guys stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.